Well, this has been a long time coming. We've missed it. Um, I don't think we've spoken to uh, my friend for quite a while, but I know that he was traveling a couple of months ago. Um, Gareth Pepper joins us on Clock in the Gallop, our uh, correspondent down under. And uh, there he is in all your glory. You're at a conference in Melbourne, but the big racing's in Sydney this weekend. Welcome, Gareth. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Nico. Um, hello, everyone. It's good to be back. It's been long. It's been a while. It's been a couple months. Um, I've been traveling for work, uh, which is great. Um, and I'm back. The weather's been a nightmare, Nico. It's yes. been yeah. pouring. Pouring. They say we're in for a wet summer. Um, you know, I'm in Melbourne. You, the, I, I told you, it's partly cloudy. I'm trying to show the view, but... It's literally been raining the whole night and whole day here. Torrential, there's flooding. So our thoughts go out to, you know, those affected, of course. Um, but there's a $5 million race in Melbourne tomorrow, the Caulfield Cup. Yeah. Um, but of course, the, the Everest is the, the $15 million one. I think it works out to about 180 million rand. Well, look, I put it into my phone um, yeah. and tried to do the, the phone blew up. <laughs> uh, the phone blew up when I had to calculate how much it was. I think it's about 170 million rand or somewhere around there. Yeah, 170, 180. It's just unbelievable, I mean, isn't it? it? It's, it's, it's it's crazy how much they're racing for there nowadays. But I mean, as you know, uh, Gareth, um, you've been to both countries. It's it's like uh, it's like it's on drugs there. You know, in terms of the whole game, it, it's just yeah. to the power of thirty. Um, but it's great to see. We're going to touch on, I think we can touch on the Caulfield Cup a bit later because we, you're going to be in Melbourne for the Melbourne Cup as well. So I'm looking forward to having that chat to you at the beginning of next month. But let's talk about the meeting at um, Randwick, at Royal Randwick. And firstly, the conditions. It, it's, I think you said they were over the worst of the weather. So it's going to be partly cloudy tomorrow. They don't expect any rain, but it is a soft track. Nico, the rain has just been torrential for days, months, weeks. Um, it's a soft seven, but yeah, it's just soft, soft, soft. The forecast doesn't look too bad, but it's yeah, it's not, it's not ideal. And um, you just hope they sort of get decent weather so that they can have a good summer season as well, autumn season, because the tracks have just. I think the last time we spoke, the rain was just horrific mm. too. That was a couple mm. of months ago. It hasn't stopped. Uh, and Saturday at my house, I um, had to get the flippers and the snorkel out. It was yeah, that would be yeah, horrible. So I hope you kept your daughter in her room so that she wasn't too scared. Yeah, I had the speedo on as well, so that was yeah, even worse. Yeah, well, that would have been terrible for everyone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, now let's get down to business here. So we've got, um, we, I think we've got 10 races, but we're going to speak about five of them. I'm just going to bring them up. We're going to speak about five of the 10. So I want to start yeah. off with Kosciuszko which we chatted about this time last year. Um, this is a 1,200-meter event for three-year-olds and older. Um, always a nice event to bet on. And yes. um, give us give us your short list. I see looking at the field, there's obviously quite a few that maybe have double entries too. But, but the point is here that we've got, uh, we've got quite a few of them uh, in line. Quite a, the emergencies are from 15 down. But um, which one of the 14 are we going for? The one that's been scratched. Unfortunately, the oh, eight horse. Oh, really? Oh, and I did the form yeah. yesterday. Yeah, I just it's thought me. it would be a great. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get the punters off to a good start. Um, anyway, he's scratched, so let's not waste oh. time on her. Say. Oh. Uh, so, so um, I had a value selection. You know, I hate a bit of value, Nico. Mm. Um, yeah, you do. Yeah, I uh, I like the five. Another one. Um, the updated betting, I unfortunately haven't got, but it, before scratchings, another one was 18 to 1. What's it there? Well, uh, that's look, number 5. $15, so 14 to 1. 14, 14 to 1. We've got the wizard on, William Pike. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, he's riding, you know, exceptionally well, as always. Great form. Um, this horse runs very well first up. Likes uh, heavy and soft going. It was my value selection in the race. It's an automatic first choice, but not a confident first choice for me. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an each of the play. Um, yeah, it, it's just definitely a horse that must be included. Uh, you look higher up, um, the obvious next choice and what should probably be my first choice now would be the one, Art Cadeau, uh, Damien Lane for trainer Robinson, um, you know, solid performer and yeah, very hard to not include this one. Loves the soft going too. Uh, should really be a, a horse you include. Handle the truth. 
uh, is another one that's um, right there for me. And then uh, the three front page. For me, looking at it, the winner comes from one, two, three, or five. The wow. five is my value. Um, but any one of the one, the two, the three can also win it. Um, and if you want to go wider, it's anyone's guess. But purely uh, on ratings, uh, you have to go with the top ones. It's 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 yeah. It's it's sad that the eight's out because it was going to be my banker to get punters going early. But you know that's racing. We'll mm. live to fight it the day. Uh, I'm going to go with the value here. Another one, number five. Okay, so that runs at 10 to 6 South African time on Saturday morning. So if you're up early, 5.50 in the morning. I just wanted to ask you about one quick horse. I know nothing about it, but I just like the name. Number 11, Spiranak. Um, yes. Tell me anything about it. Anything about her? Um, her third last time out. Um, yeah, trained in Scone, which is up north in New, the, uh, northern New South Wales. Yes. Um, yeah, she's a mare who hasn't won in over a year. She's uh, won well, six times. Um, yeah, uh, didn't really catch the eye, but yeah, uh, I prefer the others. I think okay. the others are, are much okay. better rated. Isn't it. this a village in Greece or something? No, I don't know what it is, but I just like the name. The point is that <laughs> you, in a polite way, you've told me to, yeah. Anyway, okay, let's move on to race six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the sixth race now. Um, we're coming up to that. That runs, by the way, at 25 past six in the morning. It's the Sydney Stakes. Mm -hmm. It's a group three for three-year-olds mm -hmm. and all. And it's a wait-for-age contest over the six furlongs. So um, surely we'd be guided by the best weighted horses uh, here. Absolutely. And um, those best weighted horses are, um, of course, Kementari is just a good horse. Mm. I like him on top, Nico, because he's reunited with Nash Rewilla. Um, this is a horse, I don't know if you remember, he went to stud and he, uh, he was infertile. He was sh shooting blanks, basically. Mm. They brought him back. They gelded him. Um, with Nash Rewilla, he's very, very good. I mean, look at him, 2.7 million in earnings. He's an eight-time winner, multiple places. He mm. can fly at the, He loves the course. Uh, I also like um, number four in the Congo. And viewers would like this horse because he's out of Via Africa. That's right, yeah. Now, yeah, and he's done very well. And he's, and he's been kept in end time, so he's not been gelded yet, uh, this horse. So there's, Group uh, one winner, he's going to go to stud. Um, yeah. Great that James McDonald's riding. Negatives would be... He hasn't won at the course. Yeah. The trait's just a bit too long for him, in my opinion. I'm not saying he can't win, but um, if anyone can get him to win, it's that man, James McDonald. He is an absolute freak of a jockey. Wow. 71 group ones at 30 years old sure. and just getting going. He is, uh, I read somewhere that Vin Cox, the racing manager, the um, one of the, the GM of Godolphin, formerly with Magic Million, said uh, it's almost as if he's got a crystal ball and he can see into the future. And they just run for him. He's a, just a, a freak, this guy. He's a natural superstar. So he's in the mix for sure. I uh, also like um, uh, 17, Forbidden Love, if you go down. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what I like her. Mm. Uh, soft and heavy going is where she does her her winning. She is a Group 1 winner. Michael Friedman trains her. Kieran McAvoy rides her. And she's done nothing wrong. She's ten uh, $10, so mm. she's 9 to 1. Bit of value, absolutely worth including. And um, I think she's a huge hope uh, for Bidden Love. You and, uh, we've tipped her before, Nico. Yeah, when she, when she, yeah I remember. When she's won. Yeah, the only negative is the the wide gate. But she loves, she's a mudlark. She loves it uh, soft or, or, or heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely in with a chance. And then back up to the top, the one Apache chase. Um, this horse really, really thrives second up. Second run after a break. His record is five starts for three wins in the third. Uh, definitely in with a chance. He's a group one winner as well. And um, yeah, I, I, I think he's a chance. But again, he's another that likes a bit further. So uh, I think we found the right ones to get us through. Uh, the one, the two, the four, and then the filly down at the bottom. Uh, forbidden love number 17. She has to be the best weighted horse in the race. I know you say that yeah. there's negative about the draw, but when you look at this, she's carrying 56 and a half rates at 113 versus yeah. these 110 horses who, who are carrying two kilos more. So she would have to give them ordinarily one and a half kilos and is now in receipt yeah. of two from them. So she is very handy weighted for Bidden Love. So we are leaning yeah. to, I'll be leaning towards certainly for Bidden Love being a st st statistical person. Let me get that out right. Um, ahead yeah. of horses like Kim and Tari. 
Apache chasing in the Congo. Okay, now here's where the big yes. money is. Quarter past seven, Saturday morning, the richest race on turf. Now that race traditionally used to belong to the Arc de Triomphe years ago, um, which was just hallowed in history as the best, well, it is still the best turf race for me in the world, uh, the Arc. It's got heritage, the Arc. It's got heritage. The only problem with it, I find these years, is the weather. Um, you know, and and I would think that in order to attract people, maybe, I don't know whether it always rains in Paris in the first weekend in October, but certainly if, maybe the authorities need to look at it because had they have put it in a week, I know you can't change the weather, but what I'm saying is it traditionally always rains that week. Always. Um, so so whether I don't know whether they do want rain, the Parisians, but my point is that Baid would have gone there or would have been an option of going there had it have been a, a race that we know was accompanied by good weather. But because it's being accompanied by bad weather, they didn't even look at it in the end. And yeah, a valid point, but remarkable that he's running on Everest Day in the UK on Champions yeah. Day, Baid. Yeah. And it's probably his last start by all accounts, Nick. Yes. Yeah, it would be his last and start. Um, He's a, he's an absolute animal, superstar, like yeah. a pleasure a to watch. I get goosebumps watching him. He's a, a beast. beast. A beast of a horse. And the stories that go on behind it. I mean, I'm fascinated with why not more is done, certainly in our country. Um, I don't know how much is done in Australia, but about the stories behind the horses. Um, oh. we, we, we tend to lose sight of that. But but the UK are excellent at this. Um, the, you know, they're excellent at the background story. Um, behind the horse, training in the morning, where it grew oh, up, the management of the it. horse, the decisions that are taken by oh. the, uh, by um, Sheikh Hamdan's, uh, the late Sheikh Hamdan's team about where to run the horse, all of those, the intricacies involved in the decision making. I think more yeah. needs to be done about that in, in, in the countries that race. But anyway, more about that another time. The point is here, yeah, we're racing for huge, huge money. Um, just tell me a little bit quickly, about the fact that you need to buy your way into the race. Don't, don't you need to buy your way into this race initially? You own, there's, there's slot owners. It's almost yeah. like, uh, what's the race in South Africa? The Gold Rush. Yeah, yeah, they've the, started the Gold Rush, yeah. Yeah, you buy a slot buy for a certain it. amount, and then you, if you don't have that uh, horse to participate, you almost tie up a deal with someone who does have a horse. And, and, and they do a stake split and they do all of that, which I think is the best. I think that's amazing. I love that concept. Yeah. Um, so obviously Chris Waller Racing owns a spot in the Everest. And of course, they've got the world's best sprinter in their slot. And oh, yeah. I mean, look at it. I mean, it's it, it won uh, so well at, at, at Royal Ascot. It won the King oh. Dan Stakes. And it, uh, yeah. you know, the Australian sprinters have always done well in the UK. Uh, we think of yeah. Schwarzier and horses like that too. But I mean, Absolutely. he really is the real deal. $19.1 million. Now, if I put that into my um, computer or my, my phone. Don't. It will explode. It will no, explode. Well, it Don't do it. already exploded, but I mean, there'd be smoke and fire and brimstone. <laughs> um, yeah. That's remarkable. Okay, it's so, life changing. So, I mean, he's had 22 wins from 39 starts. Is anyone opposing Nate to st tomorrow? I mean, it's hard to look past him, Nico. He's the he's the world's best sprinter. Like, mm. you know what it's like. These are living, breathing things. But goodness me, the, he! Mm. How can you fault him? He looks a picture. I saw the the photo of him on the Chris Willow. I think it was the Twitter. He looks a million bucks. He's thriving as an eight year old. Obviously, there's a, a very small South African connection with him because of Stuart, who used to work for, I believe, Sean Terry, and then became a steward. Um, he's his main strapper, or, or, or oh, is not he? Oh, really? Eh? Oh, he's with him. He and of course, and oh, of Peter Musket, who now trains in Durban, um, worked in the Chris Waller camp too when Winks was there. Yes. Yeah. How do you go past him, Nico? I mean, yeah. he can be beaten, sure. Would we like him to beaten, be beaten? If you're the owners of the other horses, yes. But it's not a race you're going to have a bet on to make money. It's a race you're going to watch and enjoy you know, the richest turf race in the world. It's hard to look past him. For me, um, I, I do, obviously, he's my my top choice. I like value in the horse of number five, Mizzou, for uh, the Snowdens and Sam Clipperton. Um, this guy's, he's doing well. He's doing a great job, Mizzou. Um, he's peaking, he's third up. 
Um, he also doesn't mind a soft and heavy track. Sam Clipperton, you know, he's a very competent rider. The Snowdens are legends of the game. Uh, I like him. He's, what's he, 17 to 1? There's a bit of place value for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Eduardo, hard to look past. He looks like the natural leader here. Um, a lot of talk's been made of a nature strip being drawn 12, the widest of all. I actually think it's a good thing, personally, because the course is going to be cut up. Uh, it's soft, um, but he's just a natural athlete, an absolute superstar. And yeah, it'll be good to see him win it. But you can go with Lost and Running, Mars Crusader, who've all run in this race before, uh, but they've all been beaten many times by nature strip they haven't really managed to lower his colors uh apart from eduardo i believe and it's pretty hard to look past him nico but it's not a punting race it's a mm. it's a enjoy watching spectacle. the world's best. Mm. it's a spectacle it's a spectacle for sure okay well that's yeah. the everest uh, 15 million oz dollars on the line there and uh that runs at quarter past seven Saturday morning, make sure that you tune into that. I'm sure we'll be covering it on our local racing networks here in South Africa. Okay, we're moving on to race eight, which is the Silver Eagle. This is a race for four-year-olds, and it's a class, uh, I don't know what class it is, but it's 1,300 meters. Um, do you have anything for us here, um, or does this look open? No, Mr. Mozart looks very, very, very hard to beat uh, from my point of view. Um, he's in great nick. Uh, he was great first up. Um, Lovely horse in great form. He's a um, uh, a horse you can follow with confidence. He's drawn one, whereas last time he ran, um, he was drawn, I think, widest of all. Loves the track. He'll go well. Uh, for me, um, he looks the winner. I do like him. He's, you know, he's got a great pedigree. And, um, yeah, I, I think he, he if, if there was a pick six or something that they had, I would banker him mm. uh, and take a chance. Uh, I think he's the winner. I really do like him, Nico. I think he's uh, most definitely uh, the horse to beat here. And um, yeah, his form's pretty good. I mean, he was second. Well, I'm looking in at a... this. He was second on the 10th of September was his most recent run in a grade two race at Rosal Gardens. And yeah. he was just touched yeah. off there. But that was his seasonal debut, effectively, wasn't it? Absolutely, it was. Yeah. And No, it was. It was no, a it seasonal wasn't. debut. He had a small little break after August. He had a trial yeah. between them. Um, is no, these are two trials, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, I really like him, Nico. He, I think, I would bank him, I'd bank him personally. Okay. Um, but he's not in saying that, I, I do actually like another horse in the race. If you go down to the mayor number 14, uh, Espiona, the daughter of Extreme Choice, she's classy, uh, she is, um, a proven winner and she can win. James McDonald, Chris Waller. Could be a race to race double. Yeah, Nature Strip, mm. Espion, uh, the mayor. Uh, she's definitely not without her chances and must be included as well. Uh, another one I like is uh, a 10. And this is a horse for your black book, Nico. Number 10, Waterford. Mm. He's a uh, four year old entire. He's only had four starts for three wins and a third. Chris Waller, Hugh Bowman teaming up again. Likely raced, of course. He's got a bit of a wide draw. I like this horse. He's he's wow. he's a group horse in the making. He'll be a hundred plus rated horse in a couple of starts, in my opinion. And I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he if he sort of catches them and wins here because he's definitely racing at a level that's far below his ability, in my opinion. So definitely watch him. Put him in the black book, and I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to. So I think for me, those are the main three. Uh, pretty hard to look past any others. Uh, maybe include the two. Uh, from the Robert Heathcote yard, the mayor. Uh, she's got a rating of 108. She's won a couple. Uh, she's won just under 900k, so she's in with a chance. But just keep your eye on the 10, Nico. He's a he's a really lovely horse in the yeah. making. I'm not saying he's a champion, but he's going to win a lot of races. Yeah, so it's on the up uh, is number 10, Waterford. But you're leaning Absolutely. towards uh, one, Mr. Mozart, and uh, down at the bottom here, number 14, Espiona. Just quickly, nice to see Keegan Latham uh, riding in this one. He rides the five flying crazy. How's he going? Keegan, uh, obviously, you know, he's uh, got a beautiful daughter, Eleanor, now. He and Nancy welcomed a beautiful daughter. So uh, Keegan's great. He's he's grinding away. Keegan's Keegan. He's honest. He's reliable. He's a good mm. mate. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and, yeah, you know, in these bigger days, unfortunately, he doesn't get these massive opportunities. But he's riding winners, Nico. I think he yeah. had two winners on Wednesday. Uh, he's a good boy. He's someone we should get on the, the, the show again soon. Yeah, 
yeah, we need to get him back on um, and chat to him, but we will do that, I think, in the near future. You wanted to touch on race nine before you go. I know you've got to get back to proceedings there at this conference that you're attending, but race nine you wanted to specifically talk about because there's a new initiative for for uh, five-year-old horses um, that uh, they've got some incentives. This is restricted to five-year-olds and they basically are, are just giving some incentives to continue running your horses. Tell us a little bit about it, the background. So basically, they, there's this new initiative on the 5th of November at Randwick there. I think it's Randwick um, is going to, uh, sorry, Rose Hill on the 5th of November. It is going to be a $2 million race for five-year-olds only. That's it. Right. Got to be fine to run in this. This yeah. is like the prelude. How wonderful the prelude's worth a million bucks, Nico. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just, well, it's just yeah. yeah. So um, you made a very valid point just before we clicked on it encourages them to keep horses in training longer. It increase it encourages. I think that's wonderful for racing. It's very hard to look past the the the, the one horse. Mm. Absolute. Uh, um, he's probably the best bet of the day, Ellsberg. I'd banker him. I'd mm. have a bet him in doubles. Maybe onto racing in South Africa. Onto Baid. Uh, he's the best bet on the card for me, Ellsberg. Very very hard to beat. Don't be confused. This is not Ellsberg in Johannesburg. This is Ellsberg Racing at Rand, yeah. Uh, Randwick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, so there we go. So it looks like uh, 19 to two to one. Looks like two to one is the, the Great go. price. Yeah. Great price. So you're Take saying this is probably the best of the day for you, Ellsberg. Yeah. And yeah. if we're taking any horses on Saturday after we do our preview with uh, Lyle, I think is on tomorrow with me. Um, then we can we can include Ellsberg. Look, Gareth, it's been a great uh, uh, time chatting with you again. Appreciate all your thoughts and, and you coming through to us. We're looking forward to the Melbourne Cup first Tuesday in November. And I know you're coming out to South Africa um, in the not-too-distant future. Early next year? Early next year, going to come see the old boy. Uh, I've got to make sure he's okay. And I'm going to see before two. you do. I think I, I definitely, I'm popping in down that part of the world in December. So I will um, get together with him at some stage and and then um, all hell will break loose, I'm sure. He'll get stuck into that drinks cabinet of his. He's got too much nice whiskey that's not being drunk at the moment. So okay. please help yourself. You have my permission. And uh, yeah, uh, when I'm there, maybe I can't wait to see you and some of my other very good friends. It's going to be amazing. But um, yeah, hopefully it, it will come soon. Time's flying. I can't believe it's October already. Absolutely. Gareth Pepper joins us from Melbourne. He's talking about racing in Sydney. Uh, just quickly before you go, there's that big race, the Caulfield Cup there tomorrow. Uh, you're not going to yeah. be there, but but quickly tell us the Caulfield Cup and leading into the Melbourne Cup, what the talk is uh, for the Caulfield Cup. Is there anything good on the card or is there anything good in that particular race to look to look out for? I'm going to pull up the field now. Um, all I know is it's a $5 million race, Nico, Again, which is huge, good. huge money, yeah. Um, huge money. Over 2,400 metres. Um, first prize is $3 million Aussie. First prize, you know, it's just remarkable. Um, everyone is going for, and when I say everyone, all the experts uh, are tipping horse uh, number nine, Allegron. Um, seven, Vaughan de Clare will be going for towards the Melbourne Cup, and he's being ridden by Blake Shin, who's returned recently uh, from Hong Kong, as you know, and he's riding very well, Blake. Um, Great House is a, is a chance for uh, Brett Preble and Chris Waller. That's another one. And yeah. who else did I? And and I haven't done the form, so please don't 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 hold me to any of these selections. But yeah. uh, just reading through it this morning, uh, that was those were probably the the main main selections from me. But um, what's remarkable? Um, oh, God, don't forget your old old mate David Payne's filly Montefilia, yeah. number four. Mm. Jason Collett rides for your mate David Payne, and she's a Group One winner, as we know. Uh, lovely, lovely mare. She won the Randvet Stakes uh, in March at uh, Randwick. Uh, which is a group one, but um, interesting for me, it's a $5 million race and we haven't got any Raiders from Europe uh, or anywhere else in the, in the world. There's no international horses, not even from New Zealand, which doesn't make sense to me. I mean, this is decent money, Nico. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, again, it would, million, be a, it would be a heavy track. Would it there? Nico, the, again, the rain we've had here, I'm, I'm not too far from Caulfield. It would be very soft to heavy uh, yeah. for sure with more rain coming tonight, I believe. And um, yeah, it's it's just great. But um, 
can you imagine? We've got a $5 million race in Melbourne and a $15 million race in Sydney. It's just unbelievable. A huge racing weekend there in, in, in Australia. Well, we always are thankful for you and appreciative of you coming on, on the show. I know you've got a huge following here too, Gareth. So nice to catch up with you. And we'll see you Thank again you. Um, in a few weeks' time for the Melbourne Cup uh, where we can get the load on. I know you're planning a special guest for that show, so we're looking forward to who you've got on for us. But uh, all the best for the rest of your weekend and uh, catch up with you again soon, Gareth. Thanks, Nico. Cheers, everyone. Go well. Bye-bye.